When users have issues with an existing information system, that is where we get into maintenance. Now, when I say system maintenance here, what I mean is that the system, you know, we either fix existing issues in the system or we adapt the system when requirements change because requirements will eventually change and part of system maintenance is figuring out how to um you know how to meet the changes in requirements in the existing system so that's what we're going to talk about here when users are using a system and it doesn't work the way that either it should be or the way that would be best for them for their job, they're typically going to make some sort of request for a change. So you might have a bug report or something like that. You uh, give a report that says, hey, this piece of the system failed while I was using it. I can't do my work or you know, it was a temporary barrier for me to doing my work, but I'm still able to continue or something like that. Or they might have a feature request that says, hey, it would be really helpful if we had this feature in here because I could provide this much more value or something like that. This could come from the users. There's also a possibility it could come from managers trying to uh, work with the competitive strategy and um, bring things in a new direction with regards to that system. So. All of these requests are going to get recorded and they're going to get prioritized. The um, information system personnel are going to figure out what the high priority errors are and what the low priority errors are. High priority might be along the lines of this uh, software keeps on crashing every time I turn it on and I can't figure out what's going on because it won't even stay on long enough before it crashes again or the server has just completely stopped working and the database is completely inaccessible. That kind of stuff is high priority, for example. Now, when it comes to uh, software failures in particular, uh, sometimes you have quick fixes for really high priority issues. Um, so something with the software is really not working. They have to fix it as soon as possible. They will release a patch that can update the software and hopefully address that fix. With the low priority problems, um, fixes like that might take a little bit longer and there might be uh, many low priority problems that are being worked on so long as there's not really like a lot of high priority stuff happening. So the low priority problems, they're not going to be released immediately. Uh, releasing something takes a certain amount of time and bandwidth and money and all that kind of stuff. Instead, what will happen is they will bundle all these fixes for the low priority problems into a service pack. And the service pack will be applied in much the same way as an update. Um, so the actual fixing of bugs and all that kind of stuff is going to involve maybe a similar process to what we've described regarding the SDLC, which is that, um, you know, you need to figure out what's going on. You need to figure out the requirements for what the fix should look like or what the enhancement should look like. And then you have to actually build up the fix and test everything and you know, make sure everything is working before you actually ship it out. You could make comparisons to the software development lifecycle from this process. And then sometimes if there are a lot of new features or a lot of fixes or something like that, it might be worth making a new release entirely. You're making a version two of your information system or at least some of the software components of the information system and releasing that so that users get a new, uh, users get a new version of the software. Now, um, this might be surprising to some extent, but most software is released with 
bugs that the developers are aware of. But what they try to do is they try to minimize the severity of the bugs that they leave in by prioritizing the uh, severity of issues that they come across when they're actually in the implementation phase. You can't fix everything in implementation phase before release because it just would cost too much money. Um, there are so many ways in which tiny little errors can sneak in, especially when you're working on custom software. Um, so many ways in which tiny little errors can sneak in and if they are harmless, and there's not that much time before release and their budget is kind of getting thin and all that kind of stuff. It doesn't make sense to fix every single tiny little error if most users aren't really going to notice it. And hopefully after the software is actually released and it starts producing value, either by people licensing it or people within the organization using it to generate value, then there can be more funding for actually fixing those last little issues in the software in the system maintenance phase. That's usually what happens here. Now, if there are enough enhancements that need to be made, and if there are enough changes in the business structure that the requirements have to actually be updated, and the information system itself isn't working quite as well as it should be or used to be or something like that, you might trigger another round of the software development lifecycle uh, where you have to go back and look at the system. You redefine the system. So you say, what is it doing now and what does it need to be? Where is that gap? And then you use that information to update the requirements, maybe get rid of some old ones, maybe add some new ones, maybe change some of the existing ones to match the new requirements. And then you go through component design to actually update those uh, different components and you implement everything and release it out to the users um, as a new version, maybe version two, maybe version 1.1, maybe version 1.0.1, depending on how the versioning scheme works and how major of a change it is. But with enhancements and possibly even with some bug fixes, um, in the software, you can start a new software or system development life cycle cycle. So that is the idea of system maintenance pointing up to system definition here. It's sort of an ever evolving thing. Once you have an information system in place, sometimes you don't even need to throw the whole thing out and build from scratch. You can just evolve it. You can bring it up to speed, add in new technology, add in new software, uh, adapt it to new procedures, uh, bring in more people to do different jobs, uh, or change up how the job definitions actually are defined so that people have different definitions and it works more efficiently. All that kind of stuff. Um, so that's how system maintenance can lead back into system definition. when. Maintenance, you know, in, in maintenance, you collect things that need to be added into the system and things that need to be fixed within the system. And once you get enough major, major, major changes, that's when you might consider going into another loop. And that is the software development life cycle, or not software development, my apologies, system development life cycle. Um, that is a methodology that has developed over a long period of time that businesses can use in order to um, actually build up their information systems with some idea that they'll be able to know what is needed for the system. They'll be able to define that out ahead of time. And within those definitions, it means that development is actually a lot easier. And the nice thing about it too, is that you can have that initial foray into uh, information system development with the uh, system definition and requirements analysis phases. You can do that research into saying, this is exactly what we need. This is what we need to implement and get a better idea of how much it would cost to actually do that implementation. 
maybe even foray into the um, component definition phase and say, here's all these softwares that we think will be super useful. Here's all this hardware that we can use. Uh, we're going to do the cloud. We're going to do in-house server. Here's some database design that we're looking at, the procedure, the procedures that we'll need, the job positions that we'll need in order to um, actually make it work. You can look at all of that, get a better idea of how much it will cost before you actually get into the meat of creating everything and spending money doing that. So that's the benefit of this methodology.